Hi everyone, my name is Simon. Welcome to our teardown section. Today we're going to deal with this interesting uh, square rendering. We're going to talk a little bit about composition, mainly about composition actually, and quite a bit of uh, details as well. So let's get started. As you can see, like in terms of uh, overall image, the image is really nice, like the the texturing and like the detailing and the overall modeling is interesting and the scene itself is quite like it, it do it does look like a, like a daily uh, life in this really nice square so on this aspect it's it's quite working there's something that I think is a little bit lacking and it comes from a couple of factors I think regarding the composition the the main problem i think we do have is the idea of um, subject basically in an image the the same way that uh, well basically the idea is that you have to have the sort of thirds and uh, sort of follow this rule to have something balanced it sort of applies as well for the number of subjects you have in an image and you have to avoid having even numbers of subjects in your image so here we do have like two problems, I think, that sort of uh, unbalance the the image. The first one is that this tree here is really sitting right in the middle of the image and cuts the whole image in two different entities. And there's no like, it's completely psychological, but it, it's what makes like the, the image a little bit weird. The second thing also is that in terms of um, subjects, we have like, the building itself, and I quite like this way of the hierarchy uh, in an image, is that it's sort of secondary, because the what's like the what's happening in the image is actually in the foreground, and this is used as a as a setting in the image, and well, this is actually how I tend to set up my uh, scenes because not everything not everything is directly about architecture, but it's more about like pe how people live in it. But anyway, that's another topic. The thing is. Um, this means that basically what su the subjects we have in our image is this huge tree and these guys here. And the thing, the way, the thing is that the way, like when I, these are the the main subjects in our image in a way. These are just framing the image. So the thing is, there the way they are distribu distributed in the in the frame is a little bit too like. As you can see, it's just as if they were like one in the middle, one on the left third, one on the right third. And this is not really balanced. So it would be like maybe we would need this guy to be... I quite like the way they're here. I quite like the way that they're distributed here and this is sort of working. The problem I have is with this guy who... Well, they're not really... Like you would want them to be either like closer from us or further but as you can see they're like directly like right on the same distance which is a little bit weird here like it's not weird but as you can see here we got one guy one tree and another guy and it's not really like balanced and the other thing is that you don't even really understand where they are going because they seem to be going this way but there's no there's nothing like the there's no access to anything so in terms of even in terms of storytelling it's not really convincing so i don't really need like i think it's just um if the if the design is set this way it it really means like that you have to change a little bit the 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 point of view to get something a little bit more balanced and not and so you can either play around more with the the cutouts and how you sort of tell the story and um, balance your image or you can play a little bit with the the point of view maybe you have to look a little bit more on the left and uh, move on the right or something like that it's it's really subtle but i think it would change the way we feel the image other thing regarding the composition is the foreground 
and it's more regarding the contrast and things like that. But as you can see, if we turn it in black and white, uh, even if we're in the in the shadow, it's still super light, and uh, we don't have like we do lack a little bit of uh, black in the image. So that's why I would suggest having like darkening at least the foreground. This would is going to be interesting in two ways. The first one is that because basically the main problem I have with the foreground here is that it's not really interesting. It's not like uh, it's a little bit dull in the sense that nothing's really happening. So what you want to do is to avoid your viewer to actually focus on it too long. So if you have everything on the same uh, gray value, if I may say, um, people are going to give as much uh, weight in the image to this than to this. So basically their eye is going to be doing this. Whereas if we have something way darker here, it's actually could be even darker than what it is now, but it's just a matter of uh, fine tuning. But the the eye is already going to focus on the lighter area, which is this and well, this part here, and uh, etc. But it's going to avoid focusing too much on this, which is a good thing. It's actually like another way. Another thing that could be known is to actually add a little bit more variety and detail. But if the design says it's supposed to be this kind of flowers and this kind of bush, then you cannot really do anything else. So it's more in terms of composition and lighting that you can make it sort of disappear or not disappear, but take less uh, importance in the way in the in the overall image. That's the idea. Second thing is going to be regarding a couple of details. Um, first one is, yeah, a couple of indoor details I think are lacking in general. Uh, the building itself is really like simply and nicely modeled. I really like it and it's like, yeah, just really efficient. The thing is, I quite, I really like the, like for say, this reflection here is really cool because you have like a nice lighting, etc. Here it's a little less interesting as you can see because we can see the HDRI and it's if it's always what you want to avoid. So there's like a couple of ways to avoid that, but it would basically involve the easiest way is to either like if you have a building, just uh, copy it, change its material and like copy it everywhere or just have something to reflect the other way. You can do it as well as to take your trees and uh, like here you can see where like we could use this bush, set it here and change the, the scale or something. The idea is to act, at least get rid of the, the HDRI. Uh, blurry horizon that doesn't really make sense in terms of uh, actual physics. Um, so yeah, in terms of uh, detail inside and inside the building here, for example, we have a straight view inside the, well, we don't really know what it is. And that's the thing is like, is it a, is it just a simple corridor? Is it a, is it a bedroom? Is in what, what is it? So you might want to add a couple of details or people or things like that, that could make it a little bit more interesting. Uh, it doesn't have to be completely uh, surreal. It's just like really simple details that are going to make it more interesting. Another thing as well is regarding the people integration. There's a couple of adjustments that should be done. Uh, the first one is regarding these guys behind the glass panel. When you're dealing with a, a glass panel or whatever glass you're working with, whatever, is that when you insert someone behind it, you have to be careful not to not to do it this way, basically, because here the idea, like what you can see is that the opacity has been decreased so that basically we can see through the guy and still see the wall. So that's not really how it works, of course. So, well, the normal way to do it is to extract the reflection pass from your rendering uh, engine and have a use the channel and uh, have the people, the cutouts uh, behind this channel. So you would have like a layer with the reflection and the people behind this layer. And this would work perfectly. If you cannot uh, extract a render um, a reflection pass from your rendering uh, engine for whatever reason, uh, you can still do things pretty easily. That would be say you just take a, a snap of your 
overall image and you just crop it uh, here and you uh, use it as a soft light blending mode uh, layer here and uh, that way you're going to have like a nice reflection and you it's going to go above or over the the cutout where it's supposed to be integrated so that's the idea another thing regarding the people integration is this one and well that one is okay but this one here there's a, a tiny problem is that once you are in a solid uh, shadow and by solid i mean that it's the shadow that is cast by a solid volume so if it's not if it's completely opaque then you cannot have cast shadows so basically this doesn't exist you still have some sort of a ambient light that creates some sort of a well what we would call ambient occlusion but um, you cannot have to cast shadows so this is okay this is okay but this is not okay the other thing regarding the shadows as well is this one here there's it's really interesting because there's a really good thing about them and there's a really well not a really bad thing but there's something wrong with them that makes it uh, still unrealistic as you can see here uh, when we are like this is the same ground and as you can see um, this is in the sun this is in the in the shadow and the difference is uh, a decrease of saturation when we are in the shadow so that's how it behaves realistically so we can see it's been done here so that's a good thing that means the saturation is behaving okay second thing is that you can see the hue of the the ground here is a little bit uh, green orange whatever and here it's a little bit more bluish that oftentimes happen when it's shadows but sometimes it gets switched to other hues but mainly it's uh, blue and here you can see the hue as well is changed the problem we do have though and that makes it uh, still not look uh, okay is that um, it's fading out way too much because you can see here these guys are like 1.75 meters or something like that this dude here is uh, at least three times the same height and if we look at the shadow here it's it's still uh, quite sharp and solid. Whereas here, this point here is a is the like the the projection of this point here, which is 1.75 high, let's say, and it's already completely faded out. So that's not possible. So basically, you need to fade out a tiny bit your uh, shadows, but you cannot fade them out this much because otherwise, it's not really realistic. The other thing that is good uh, also is the feathering that is that does make sense because basically this feathering should be equal to this feathering here and we're sort of okay so yeah that's really really nice work here it's just this tiny details that need to be adjusted final thing regarding the um, the overall image and i finished there is um, one thing regarding the sky i changed a little the the hue because i'm not really sure uh, sky can have this color it more looks like the, the cyan you would have in the water so I change it a tiny bit well it's just a matter of uh, yeah I guess it's more uh, it's not really important but still and the other thing I think that is a little bit problematic and it could be like uh, it's just a matter of a uh, graphic style I'd say is that they they are a lot of areas that are completely burnt so this here and especially this guy here actually there's something weird i don't get why uh i don't get why this guy cast the shadows this big on this one and this guy doesn't even catch cast shadows or maybe it just stopped there anyway um I think this is a little bit too like it, it i guess the idea is to have this sort of a high key uh, image but still you don't you want to avoid having completely burnt areas whether it's in white or in black but just yeah be a little bit careful with that but beside that uh, it's a really really nice image and uh, really good work so 
I'll just stop there. Uh, hopefully you've learned interesting uh, tips regarding, well, focusing on your image on the, on the right subject and uh, tiny details you have to keep in mind when inserting people. So yeah, thank you guys.